When UBC engineers invited me to come down to their shake table, where they would be simulating the 2011 megathrust earthquake that hit Japan on a replica of a BC Victoria school, I obviously said yes, and I took a camera, of course. So today we are about to run the seventh test of our, of our series. It has been looking at uh, long duration earthquakes, subduction earthquakes that we expect to have here in BC. We have uh, a, a full scale model of a public school block, what we call a school block, and it is a wood frame retrofitted school built the structure in such a way so that we will see uh, anticipated damage to specific earthquakes and then we have engineers come in after the, the test and do the inspections the way that they're going to have to do after we have the real event here in BC. What we're trying to do is equip the engineers to do quicker, more accurate job of the inspections after. When we're assessing a building, we're looking on the inside and outside for indications of damage. After the shake, we're looking at how much of those nails pulled out. That's why you've got to be careful when you inspect it, because if you're seeing this building from a distance, you're saying, oh, it looks fine. And what we've seen here today is we pushed it harder beyond what the code is requiring, and it did very well. So there's a huge benefit in upgrading buildings. Graham said that if they had tested a 1955 school with no seismic upgrades, it would have come down right away. But these tests are also designed to hone in on what to look for after a major earthquake so that you can make an early assessment about whether you can still live in your home or not. One of the biggest issues after an earthquake disaster is the thousands of people that will be living on the streets waiting for engineers to inspect their home, a process that could take months. With scientists from around the world watching, the next step for UBC engineers will be to test other kinds of structures and one day develop a database for every kind of building in earthquake hazard zones. And now, you're Science Smart. If you have a science question on your mind, send me a tweet and I'll try to get it answered.